Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to go away from the D&D aspects of the channel just slightly and go towards more of the cosplay and um, LARP aspects that I've talked about that I may do from time to time. Although this should interest most people who are also interested in fantasy role-playing because today we're going to talk about making chain mail. So I'm going to show you the very basics on how to make something like this. That, by the way, is a little more than just a costume, although those are not um, riveted or welded rings. They are still 14-gauge stainless steel rings, uh, so they will turn a blade uh, in most cases. Not that I'm going to go into a battle anytime soon, but if I had to, I'd much rather wear that than, uh, than something made out of, say, these kinds of rings, which are aluminum. So, uh, that's what I've got in store for you in this video. Shake your moneymaker! Ooh, two hits! Yeah! Alright, as I'm doing in all my videos, until we're done with this, uh, this contest. I'm going to take a minute to tell you about a uh, subscriber drive I'm doing and the prize is going to be this AD&D 2nd Edition Book of Character Record Sheets. It's in light new condition. All the pages are in it. None of them are filled out. They're all nice and bright, not faded. The way that you can register to win for that is simple. All you've got to do is subscribe to my channel and you'll be registered when I hit 100 subscribers which is my goal right now and at the at this morning when I checked I was at 60 so just 40 more to go. When I hit 100 subscribers I'm going to get out my uh, 100 sided die, give it a roll, go down the list say I roll 71. I'll go down the list. 71st first person is the one who gets it. I'll contact you. We'll figure out how to get it to you by mail, most likely. Um, so, we've got that out of the way. Now, on to the basics of chain mail. Like the, uh, like the chain mail caress I just showed you, you can make that. You can make uh, with the with the uh, skills I'm going to show you on this, you can make the panels that go together to make that. Uh, you're going to need something a little bit more complicated skills to make something like this claw. Because when you get down to this part, uh, you've got to learn how to do uh, contractions and things on that on the head. Uh, I'll show you some pictures of what those look like when they're actually on somebody right now. Here's what the stainless steel chainmail carass looks like and the stainless steel chainmail quaff as well. And one other thing that you can use with this same basic pattern I'm going to show you, which is called a European 4 in 1, is you can use that to make something like this out of scale mail. Scale mail bra we've got right here. Or say you want to do scale mail hanging from the shoulders where it's partially covered by a shoulder pad and it looks like you're wearing a scale mail uh, shirt, you can, you can do that easily with the 4-in-1 uh, pattern because all that is, here, let me show you, see if I can get it to where the uh, camera can see it. All scale mail is, is chain mail where the scale, which has a hole in it, hopefully you can see that there, is acts as one of the rings in the pattern. It's actually fairly simple. Unless you're trying to do something where it cups under something, then it gets a little... you get back into having to do... Uh, to contract your pattern in. But uh, for just the basic stuff, like putting shoulders on, or uh, or even doing like a, a towel, you know, where it just hangs over you on both sides, it's really simple. Um, having said that, it is also very time-consuming. Uh, this shirt that I showed you, the, uh, the caress, is, um, has about seven and a half thousand rings, of which I made all of them. Um, and 
it took since it was my wife and I's first project and she did most of the assembly and of course I made all the rings and opened them for her um, it took us off and on in our evenings a little more than a month to put it together um, our biggest project uh, was doing a uh, Stannis Baratheon costume for a local cosplayer and uh, it had about 45,000 rings and the rings were about the same gauge as these only they had a smaller inner diameter and the next thing I'm going to talk about is is the the various statistics of the rings you know the stats you've got to know to make sure you're using the right rings but uh, it, once again it took uh, both of us put together between making the rings and assembling it uh, about 111 hours to put it together because that one since we were making it for somebody else we were actually tracking uh, the amount of labor we put into it um, but I'll show you a picture of that now on that we also made all the uh, all the plate mail parts as well. Uh, they weren't actually metal. I made them out of uh, like three millimeter and, and five millimeter uh, EVA foam, craft foam that you can go to. The best place I found was Joann's has a lot of variety, but you can go to almost any large art supplier hobby store and, and find sheets of that. But we're not here to talk about that. Uh, but if you are willing to get into something that's going to be very tedious and time consuming but will give you some very cool uh, outcomes chain mail is for you there's a lot of people that don't have the patience for it so if you can do it uh, you're going to wow your local cosplayers and your local uh, um, LARP group all right let's start talking about uh, the rings themselves because that's the most basic unit of uh, kind of like a cell is the smallest unit of a living organism. A ring is the smallest part, <clears throat> beg your pardon, <clears throat> of a, uh, of a uh, uh, chainmail piece. Oh, by the way, chainmail can also be used, you can use chainmail patterns to make jewelry. You can even use some of those patterns to also make uh, complicated looking clothing. And if you're interested in some of the basic jewelry patterns, uh, let me know in the uh, comments below, and I'll make a video about chainmail jewelry, maybe like three very basic patterns that are easy to pick up. All right, uh, but the ring. In chainmail, they're actually called jump rings, and I will use uh, these extremely oversized rings as examples because I'm pretty sure you can see them in the camera. All right. This would be, uh, I don't know that I've ever measured this one before, but from the looks of it, it'd be about a 5 inch inner diameter, or ID, is what that is for short ring. Uh, the outer diameter, we'd be adding about a quarter inch to that. And that's just inner diameter measures here, outer diameter measures here. Uh, jump rings have a break in them, like this, and that's how you get the other rings into them. Um, jump, jump rings are measured, like I said, <clears throat> either by their inner diameter or their outer diameter and their gauge, which is the, a measurement, uh, that is, uh, uh, determines how thick the metal is that the, that the ring is made out of, how thick the wire that they use to make the ring out of. Um, for instance, uh, both of these pieces, the shirt and the coif, were made out of 14-gauge uh, steel rings uh, that are that I made 3 8 inner diameter. Um, while these rings here, uh, although they look very similar, they're thinner. They're made out of 16-gauge uh, anodized aluminum. And when you when you get into like if you look at the the ring lore, it's a real good source for rings, and they've got a whole lot of anodized aluminum rings. They've got steel rings. They've got rings made out of all kinds of crazy stuff. If you're willing to pay the pay the money for it, you know they've got titanium rings. They've got iridium rings. I think I'm not sure about that, but uh, 
anodizing is a way of uh, basically uh, they use electricity and uh, the, a solution in water and run electricity through it and it it causes the uh, the uh, color to adhere very um, very well to the uh, surface of the aluminum. Uh, it actually bonds with the sur surface of the aluminum so it's hard to scrape off, although it can be scraped off. <coughs> a standard ring, and I'll try to get this close enough and I'll show you with them. Actually, no, let's do it for one that has more contrast with my skin. A standard ring comes looking like this, where it loops around and it's like that. That's because what the way they make it is they coil wire onto an armature of some sort, pull that off and it looks like a spring basically, and then they saw down the side so that's why it looks like this is because it was part of a coil going up. So that's a what I call a raw ring like that. If I can get it to stay on my finger, it wants to stick to my other hand more. Okay, we'll do it right here. That's a raw ring. Uh, to show you a little bigger, it's going to look like a part look like that. I don't know if you can see that. I'll put my hair down so there's more contrast behind it. Well, that's kind of silly. That's a raw ring. <clears throat> and once again, they come in a bunch of sizes. Uh, let's see, you may not be able to see this. That's the smallest one I thought that the camera could catch, but they do come much smaller and much lighter gauge than that. Uh, back to gauges, the smaller the number in the gauge, the thicker the wire. So, like I said, these are 16 gauge rings, and they're slightly thinner than this. <clears throat> I'm not sure about this one. I don't remember. It was just one I found down in the bottom of a box, but I would estimate that's a 20 or a 22 gauge ring. <clears throat> and then this, once again, I would just have to estimate but, I don't know, eight or six gauge, something like that. That's just a, a wild guess. I could be completely wrong about that because that was not sold as a, as a uh, jump ring. That was actually a, an embroidered ring that I got just for teaching classes for this. Okay, so now we, we know a little bit about rings. Now, let's start with the basic pattern of the European 4-in-1. The reason they call it a 4-in-1 ring is you take four rings that are closed, and you run one through it. So I guess let's also talk about opened and closed rings. I'll show you three states of rings. All right. Depending on the strength of your hands, if you've got good calluses or not, if you're the kind of person that likes having really nice fingernails, you may want to, while you're working with these rings, especially if you're doing a very large project, or if you're doing something out of steel, you may want to use pliers. And these little kind of hog nose pliers like this will work just fine. These are super cheap. This I think I got these for three dollars a piece because I was going to be teaching a large class, and I had and I was wanting to send them home with the tools they needed. So here's some more examples of stuff. Um, these and these are uh, ones that we found at like Joann's or you can find them at Michael's Hobby Lobby and they've got little springs in them I've removed half the spring because uh, sometimes that's a problem they get a little too springy and uh, when you're when you're doing this 2,000 times a day fighting that spring will tire your hand out a little bit and it's just one more thing that you've got to manipulate so what I do is I put one finger under it like that and when I want to open it I just push with my ring finger to open it if I need to. Um, these are actually too small for me. These are great for my wife. My wife's got tiny hands. Uh, these I can use, although they're a little small. But once again, you can use, if you want to, you can use these bent needle nose pliers, although uh, I'm not used to it, so I don't really like these. Same thing with these. These are better for something really small like the small ring I showed you. Um, they're better for manipulating it not so great for these because they slip off easier and you will stab yourself in the other hand especially in your thumb uh, quite a bit if you use those uh, but you know different strokes for different folks also if you're cutting if you're making your own rings 
I suggest getting one of these. They are great. Uh, I think the brand on this is called Klein, and um, if I remember correctly, and Klein's are, uh, if you ever talk to an old electrician, they'll call this kind of player, call pliers, excuse me, kind of wire cutter pliers Klein's a lot of times because that's kind of like Jello, you know, it's a, it's a ubiquitous brand for that kind of pliers, but they're great for snipping heavy wire. Okay, I'm going to come up a little closer to the camera and hopefully I'll get everything centered right so it's easy to see. Alright, let me arrange these on my hand. Okay, this is the raw ring I was talking about, what it looks like when it first comes out of the bag or you first chop it off of off the coil you're making. If you take that and do and you got to go past a little bit and do that to it, you come up with these, which are now closed rings. Then if you open it up a little bit, and 30 degrees is about as much as you want to open it, because if you open it more than that, you're going to get a stress fracture somewhere on the other side eventually if you open it and close it too much. So you don't want to, don't want to bend it too much. So about 30 degrees like that's about as much as you want to open it. Here, I'll show it from the side so maybe you can see the angle a little better. And then all you've got to do is, let me get back over here, take your closed rings, four of them, and I've got two of them there, close two more, and, okay, that one's already closed, you take those and you just slip them onto the one open ring, and you close that. Do your best to make sure that um, <clears throat> that the ends line up well, because if they line up like this, that's that, that little shelf there that it leaves is something for the rings to catch on as they move, and it'll eventually open that up again. And I know that was small, so I'm going to show them to you with my large rings. <clears throat> Because of the way these are made, they don't really open and close properly, but you'll get the idea. I'm going to open it up like this, pretend it stays open, and then I'm going to take my closed rings and put them on like that. And that's why this pattern is called a four in one. And what it will do is spread out like this. See that does this so. and that is <clears throat> if the uh, if the ring was analogous to a cell think of this like a tissue uh, it is it is the next step up <clears throat> excuse me in building your actual finished piece. Okay, now what you're going to do is take the, each of these four in ones and you're going to make quite a few of them. And uh, however long you want your piece to be, you're going to make enough to add up to that. And remember, as you, uh, as you make them, depending on the way that gravity pulls on it, it may pull it in, it may stretch it out. Um, it just kind of depends on the way the way it's going to lay, so you're going to have to play with that a little bit to, to get that right yourself. But you're going to make a bunch of these, and that's going to be a what I call a chain. And if all you made was one chain, basically, you'd have like <clears throat> a headband or a bracelet um, that you could put a uh, you could put a clasp on, and and that would be a finished piece. But if you want to make something that actually covers some area, you're going to have to take several of your chains and link them together. But linking these together to make chains is the next step, and that is pretty easy as well. And I'll show you that. Here's my open ring. I've got more open rings than I do closed rings here. That's okay. 
Doesn't take long to close them. There's one ring, two rings. three rings, and there's a closed one, four rings, and we close the fifth one to make our next one. All right, so what we're going to do here, and there's no way to do this backwards at this point. It doesn't matter if it's like this or if it's like this, because uh, all you got to do to fix it is do that. So basically, what you're doing to connect these two is you're now, the connector ring is going to become the center of a new foreign one. So basically, since they are more accurate than the end of my finger and don't block as much, so basically this ring and this ring and this ring and this ring become the four closed rings that this open ring is going to attach. So. We'll just take these two, set them side by side like that, run it through. The only way to screw that up is if you miss a ring. So now it looks like that. I'm going to do the same thing over here, like that. So now it looks like some sort of earring. And I have made earrings that look like that before. Chainmail does have a lot of jewelry applications. So now, there's my, was my open ring. Here's my two from this side, my two from this side. Now it turns into a chain. And that's, sometimes you'll lay it down and it doesn't look like it's laying right, so you just kind of pick it up and bounce it around, and you can eventually get it to lay out right. So now I've got a short chain. So I'm going to put, I'm going to put one more uh, foreign one on this one. And, uh, then I'm going to off camera make another chain that's out of a uh, out of orange rings so that it's easy to tell what's what's top and what's bottom. And I'm going to show you the next step. But I'm going to do an edit cut in between so you don't have to sit here and watch me do uh, after this one anyway. So you don't have to sit here and watch me do. Uh, a chain of three, since that'll take a couple of minutes. There's no reason for you to have to watch that. Mm. <laughs> okay, and that's where I screwed up. And what did I do there? This is one screw up you can do. in too big a hurry. Uh, instead of closing this first, which should have been its own four and one, instead of closing it first, I decided to attach it onto the other, which was not good, but it's good because I like that sort of thing. Normally I might edit that out, but you get to see the one place you can really screw up there is by attaching the wrong thing to the wrong thing. So, once again, I've got the rest of my chain. I take the last two on that take this little four in one piece here. I know my fingers cover up most of it. Take the last two on it and I hook it on to the end of this open one. Do the same thing over here. Bam. I've got my chain of three four in ones there. All right. I'll be back in a second with uh, another chain made and I'll show you how to put these chains together to become a panel. Alright, I had to get a little creative uh, with my uh, with how I set up my camera since it's basically just my phone and I don't I've got to kind of set it on stuff and try to try to get the best best picture I can. But hopefully this is centered. Um, so now you see I've got my chain of orange and my chain of kind of a it's supposed to be white but kind of a really light aluminum color there. And what I'm going to do is basically take these and come on quit being a pain in the butt slide them together like that and then I'm going to take a ring and go through this top silver one and through the bottom 
or through the top orange one here, and then come across and come up from the bottom orange one and through the top uh, silver one and connect them. And basically, it's going to be in line with this, and it's going to make this ring, this ring, these two orange rings, these two top orange rings, and these two bottom silver rings, and the one I'm going to put into the middle into its own foreign one, and it will connect, and I'll do that all the way across. So uh, basically, anywhere there's one of these connectors like this, I am going to put another uh, another ring. Unfortunately, my hand may be in the way a little bit. This is the one place you can screw up, though, because you can get in here and have. Let's see if I can do it easily. Let's see. I want those facing this way, don't I? You can have one of your chains upside down. So, you see, this is now upside down, and it won't slide together right. Basically, all your rings have to be facing the same way. But to fix this, all you've got to do is take your little connector rings and turn them over. And now the whole thing's right side up again, and we'll slide under. All right, now let me get to this. Hopefully, I'll be able to get my hand out of the way enough that you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to try that. So I'm taking this purple ring so that it's real easy to see the difference between the various rings because if everything was all the same color, it's easy to get lost for a beginner. So I'm going to take this purple ring and I'm going to hook it through the top silver ring. And let me back up my hand so you can see what I've done there. So basically this ring, let me use this, this ring here is going through this ring here. Now, this is my leading end there. I'm going to take that now, and one thing that helps is if you take your finger and pop it here, it will it will lean the ring up so you can get under it. So now I am going under that. So you can see now this ring is through this ring and this ring. All right. Now I'm going to go scoot everything back in line here a little bit. And it's not as hard as it looks here, it's just trying to do it where you can see it is what makes it difficult. Now I'm going to take this and go under this ring here and up through. And as I do, this ring is going to be laying over the top like that. It's going to make what they call an eye. And I'm going to stick it through both this ring and this ring and come out the top. So, And I may have to do them one at a time, but... Uh, I'm definitely going to have to because I'm going to stop and show you where I'm at now. Okay, so now I've gone down through this ring. Hmm. Yeah, I screwed up there. And like I said, this is I haven't done this in several months, so this is where it's easy to screw up. Okay, I went, I should not have gone under this ring. I should have gone down through it too. I forgot. You go down through the through uh, one side and up through the other, and it will really depend on your uh, whether you're right or left-handed too, as to if it's easier to start on this side or on this side. My wife, even though she's right-handed, she does it backwards to what I do it, and that's part of that is I guess just the way we think. You know, she, the way she works stuff out in her brain is different than the way I work stuff out in my brain. Okay, so now you can see we're going down through this one, down through this one. We're going to go across underneath this orange ring here and above this silver ring here. And now we're going to come up. I'm trying to do this where you can see it doesn't make it easy. I'll just do it with the pliers. We're going to come up and through the bottom orange ring. As you can see there, I've got up and through the bottom orange ring. And then we're going to come over to this silver ring and go up and through it. Okay, now, if I've done everything right, which I have here, the two silver rings should be on the outside and the two uh, orange rings on the inside. And I've made basically a four and one out of this. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to lay it down and show it to you. And with a little bit of tapping and flopping around of rings, 
it should line up. And you see there. So now these four rings uh, from two separate chains, this orange one, this orange one, this silver one, and this silver one, have become part of a new foreign one that is connected with this purple one. Now I'm going to do that uh, a little more normal speed so that you can see even though it's tedious it's not that tedious. So, And you, you may not be able to see what I'm doing because it's hard to keep your hand out of the way. If I could get like a Google Glass or something I can see what I'm doing but I can't get a camera right in front of my face and still do it. I'm not that good at using cameras yet. But I can translate the motion. And as you can see, once again, I've got the silvers on the outside, the orange on the inside. A little double V thing going on. I close it, throw it down, and it's nice. Now if I screw this up, it won't lay out nice and flat like that. And it may feel like it's not laying out nice and flat at first, and then you find out, oh, the problem is I've got one of my rings further down that's not laying right and it's causing a twist. But once you've got everything where it looks like it's nice and flat, if it's still at your point gnarled up looking, well, you're going to want to look at it for a second and figure out what you did wrong. Look and see if you missed a ring or if you went backwards or something like that. Because this is really the only part of doing the basic 101 chainmail where all you're doing is making panels. This is about the only part that you can screw up. Everything else goes very quickly. And once again, you saw how quick that was. Boom, done with that. Uh, I do advise, I'm not just laying it out flat here to show you that, but it also is important to lay it out flat because like I said before, it will not It'll keep you from having to go back and redo a bunch of stuff if between each one you take a second or two to lay it out flat. Okay, I need to open this ring a little more. Uh, it's being a pain in the butt and not wanting to go through. And if I had done this, if I had done this recently, I wouldn't have to open that ring. But uh, this is one of those perishable skills that although your mind will remember how to do it, your fingers will forget. So, uh, I'll open my ring up a little bit. I've got everything hanging on there nice. There we go. Um, let's see, one other thing you might need to know is when you're trying to count out your rings, um, you can basically count out all these Four and one connectors here, and that's you're going to need the same number to connect a uh, a um, couple of chains and make a panel out of. Them. All right, down and through, and up and over. And once again, it's in the right position. I've got my. Got my two V's going there. All right. Flop everything around. Oh, that's backwards. There we go. So that is a basic, very basic, very small panel. And if you were doing it all in the same color, you know, you wouldn't really, and until your eye gets trained to it, you wouldn't really see this. Um, but I did that so with different colors that were highly contrasting so it was easy to see. Um, then you can make, you know, you can make this as big as you want. Uh, when we were making uh, like the Stannis Baratheon suit or the uh, the chainmail caress that I'm, that was my wife made uh, for me as a gift as her first attempt at chainmail. Um, we would make, and this is the part of the assembly I would help with a lot of times, I'd make little, little, uh, sorry, I'm blanking on the word, I just used it a second ago, uh, little panels about this big, and then she would just stitch those together. 
and sometimes she'd make panels that big too. Okay, so that's basically the idea of the chainmail four in one. And once again, uh, when I was telling you about like the uh, the scale mail, uh, think of when, with that all you do is you have you do the same thing with the with the chain mail only these here the connectors that have all the fours in them are the ones that are the uh, are the scales because they've got a hole the scale goes like this and they've got a hole in it you just put four in it and uh, and that becomes your connector for your four in one and then the, you've got two out here and two over here and there's your next your next scale in between them and it goes like that so scale mail is not that difficult either uh, the scales I showed you there uh, that I made that bra out of and one other and several scales I've got down in the basement that I haven't used yet are all from the Ring Lord. They make good stuff. They've got uh, actually several different size scales and they've got patterns that you can get from them too that work pretty good, although there are a few confusing places in them. Um, let's see. So that's the basics of making European foreign one. Now let's talk about some of the issues with making uh, with doing chain mail. All right. Now let me do this just so the example is nice and fresh on my fingers. Doing this even with these are relatively pliable rings for uh, for aluminum's uh, by aluminum standards these are pretty tough. But as you can see, you can tell I haven't been doing chain mail in a while because I don't really have any heavy calluses. But uh, you, if you don't have calluses even with aluminum, you're going to feel it a little bit. That stainless steel, I can do for, for this stuff here, I can do, uh, I can do about 50 or 60 of them before my fingers are just spent and raw and my, uh, and I grew my fingernails out a little bit so that they were easy to see and my thumbnails are along here have a, have a divot chunked out of them. Uh, so once again that's why pliers are not a bad idea but pliers uh, when you're doing when you're trying to get the ends to line up like this and you're like I can't quite get it can't quite get it almost got it almost got it and that's when the pliers decide to slip and they jab into your thumb or the side of your hand a lot of times. So maybe duller end pl pliers like these or these will be better than something like uh, these that have, or these that have very pointed ends. Less likely to actually break the skin, although you're probably going to break the skin with those. Um, the reason that I showed you the way I did is because that's the way we do it. We start out with, with, the, uh, with the individual ring. Uh, thinking of that like the cell, we move up to the uh, move up to the chain, which is like the tissue, we move up to the uh, um, panel, think of that like an organ, and then the finished piece is like the whole organism if you're uh, needing an analogy to think of it. And the, one of the reasons we do that is it's good, you've got plenty of places you can get to stopping points, It's um, and it's easy to pick it back up later on because sometimes you can spend a little while looking at something before you can figure out where you need to start again, especially if you start doing, there's a way to do this, and I don't, I've never done it this way, where once you get it started, you just add rings onto it. But that's also, uh, you can put rings in backwards that way um, and not know it for a long time. Uh, you can, uh, it's just easier to screw up that way. So uh, the way we do it, it's easy to, have goals where you're like, okay, say your goal is, since it's faster to have a bunch of open rings and a bunch of closed rings to uh, to work with, then as you're putting it together like I did here, opening and closing your rings, say you're watching TV one day and you've got your hour-long show, say you like uh, Game of Thrones or something like that, Vikings, and you're wanting to you're wanting to make uh, say it's Vikings and you're wanting to make your uh, your uh, Largather season three costume and you want to do the uh, the chain mail that goes on the shoulders and from the waist down and uh, here's actually a picture of uh, 
that very costume. That from the front with shield and sword and from the back at the final fitting. Well, while you're watching the show, you can take, uh, if you're buying your stuff, say like from the Lord Ring, the Ring Lord, which is where I got this from. This one's been open and I've taped it back up. But you can take a bag and you know that the bag has in this one approximately 300 rings. And I'll say, you know, you need um, 1,800 rings to do what you want to do. So you'll just take uh, six of those bags. Well, I say you know you need 1,800 clothes rings. I'll put it that way. You take six of those bags, and while you're watching TV, you just sit there and close the rings. And that way you can get a lot of the tedious stuff done while you're, uh, um, while you're entertaining yourself. Uh, also, um, books, on, books on tape, audio books, are real good for work like this. Uh, got me through quite a few projects, not just chain mail, but other stuff too, uh, where it's just tedious over and over and over, same thing thousands and thousands of times. Well, you can have your, your eyes and your concentration, your tactile concentration on what you're doing while the higher function of your mind can be following along with the story you're listening to. You know, I've listened to a bunch of stuff. Most of uh, Robert E. Howard's stuff, uh, 1984, uh, uh, Frankenstein novel. There have been dozens and dozens of novels that I have listened to uh, while doing projects like this. And they help keep you from going insane because although the finished product looks awesome, uh, there's a reason not a lot of people do it because it is tedious as hell. So, uh, I may eventually uh, do a jewelry, um, excuse me, I may eventually do a jewelry video, but um, that's only if uh, enough of you get on and comment and say you would like to see something like that. I may also do a video that talks about how to uh, do uh, expansion and contraction in your pattern. Uh, because I don't know if you noticed, but in the picture of, uh, of me in, the, uh, in this caress, it's actually form-fitting. My wife actually did a contraction that went down with where my, uh, where my torso narrows towards my waist. Uh, so if you wanted to do something like that, uh, we may do a video on that in the future if there's enough interest. Um, if I can talk my wife into it, although I may not be able to, there is a secret also for joining, um, joining your like your sides together or wherever you bring your panels all together. Um, because a lot of people you see they do it wrong and it buckles, but there is a way of doing it where it's nice and even and it looks as smooth as any seam you do in the entire thing. And it's actually a very simple secret. Uh, my wife and I came to it uh, basically at, uh, independently of each other. But uh, so it, it's something that people who think very differently can should both be able to get because she and I, when it comes to conceptualizing stuff like that, think very differently. But uh, you may see when you look up chainmail uh, vests and stuff like that where there's one that I've seen in particular where the where the guy brought it together right in the middle of the chest and then it's just a a big ridge in the middle of his chest and it does not look good if you want to get rid of that uh, like when the thing way I use it the most is when I'm making chainmail dice bags going down the side of that you can make it where there is no evidence of where you brought it together and I may make a video on that if there, but there'd have to be a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of uh, uh, interest in that before I'd even be able to talk my wife into that because she considers that a a trade secret, even though it's something that is extremely simple. And there's probably a lot of a lot of people, if you're watching this, that uh, already know about chainmail and are just kind of seeing what I say about it, who probably already know that secret. Uh, all right. That's about all I've got to say about basic chain mail right now. Just remember, start with the ring, you go to the 4-in-1, 4-in-1 to the chain, chain to the uh, uh, 
Um, why do I have so much trouble remembering that word right now? Chain to the... Uh, um, Hugger to the panel. Man, why is that not wanting to come to my lips? Chain to the panel, panel to the uh, uh, to the finished piece. Um, before I let you go, I'm going to remind you once again about my uh, channel's giveaway that I'm doing. Here's a little closer look at it. I don't know how much I can get on the screen at once because I can't see, because the way I had to rig that up, I can't see my camera, so I'll just kind of move it by. Um, this is what I'm giving away. It's in like new condition. Uh, all the pages are here. Nothing's filled out. Everything is still nice and crisp and bright. This is an AD&D 2nd edition player's record sheet book. Once again, in like new condition. So, and to register to win that, all you have to do is be one of my first 100 subscribers. All right, so uh, that's about everything I have for today. If uh, you would like, uh, please like and subscribe and share this video. All three of those things help me out a whole lot. And the more you share, the faster I'll get to 100 uh, subscribers. And the uh, quicker, if you're the winner, the quicker you'll get your record sheet book. All right. Well, that's it for today. Have a good day, and I'll talk to you later.